Let's go! LSU versus Central Michigan preview. And you're probably wondering, wait, wait, why do we want to watch Missouri? Well, this is a team that Central Michigan played in week one. And ironically, there's a lot of comparisons you can make between Missouri and LSU right now, other than the fact that Missouri is actually playing okay and LSU is not playing well at all. Now, before we actually break down this play, uh, let's actually go through uh, a few keys, okay? So the first thing is Central Michigan has played a lot better than LSU. You're looking at just base stat categories here, and as you can see, Central Michigan is pretty much outperforming LSU in each and every one of these categories. And what's very fascinating about that is you can't say level of competition because uh, Central Michigan played a decent Missouri team in week one with Central Michigan talent. And of course, LSU played UCLA in week one. But then in week two, Central Michigan played an FCS school, as did LSU. The only difference is Central Michigan's offense actually dominated where LSU's offense barely was able to get 300 total yards. I want to do a little bit of film just to show you um, one very simple thing is that Central Michigan's run game is actually really good. They have an experienced offensive line and like LSU, Missouri is running a traditional four-man front where they bring their linebackers and safeties close to the line of scrimmage which makes a lot of sense because Missouri also has a new defensive coordinator in Steve Wilkes. And a lot like Durante Jones, uh, Steve Wilkes is more well-known in the NFL. And as you can see here, this four-man front, 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 front run fit is really bad. They get outnumbered on this side. We got guys trying to rotate in single high, something LSU's doing a lot of. This guy's running to the line of scrimmage. Now the play side safety is flat-footed 30 yards away. This guy is getting to the second level, and he is running right through the right side, A-ish, B-ish gap, because this guard was able to push his defensive tackle all the way back. We get a missed tackle right here, and this is obviously a really big gain. Now, that's not going to happen against LSU's athletes, right? Well, the scary thing is that it very well could happen. Now, once again, LSU's got a lot of backups in the game. There's three backup defense alignments and, 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 and Mason Smith on the field. But once again, our run fits here were so bad and they were able to run straight through this B gap for a huge gain. Uh, we don't get the, uh, the start of this end zone camera, but you see here LSU's run fits made no sense. Um, I could say that this was just a miscommunication, but this happened a lot to LSU on tape, not accounting for gaps, okay? So Mason Smith's job, it looks like, is to play this B gap as the three technique. Uh, Ed Orgeron talked about Mason's run fits getting better, but Still, he's accounting for his gap. The problem was no one accounted for this gap. And a lot like the Central Michigan run, offensive lineman is able to get to the second level really easy. And we have two contained defenders leaving this wide open B gap. Like I've said from the get-go, I'd rather my safety be back just a little bit so he doesn't take him out of the play. Once again, he's flat-footed. Too many guys close to the line of scrimmage. And all you got to do is break through that initial contain. Once again, this run fitting is bad. Maybe Philip Webb was supposed to stunt into this gap. Maybe um, Bug Strong was supposed to be further over here. Once again, the run fits make no sense. And uh, once again, you, you can blame this on Durante Jones. I won't because Ed Orgeron is the head coach of the football team. He's a former defensive lineman. And if there is something that you would think he would be an expert in, it would be defensive tackle and just overall run fitting. But this backside or frontside B-gaps, the B-gaps have always killed LSU since they shifted to the 4-3, whereas in Aranda's 3-4, the B-gaps with your tight front is almost always accounted for pre-snap. kind of wish we could hear from Durante Jones and Jake Peets um, themselves, as you can see, just Mack truck holes against Steve Wilkes 4-3. And I'm afraid this could potentially happen to LSU as well. Now, this is what's really fascinating is we have yet to hear from Durante Jones from the first two weeks of the season 
Whereas with Steve Wilkes, he is made available to the media and he took full blame for Missouri's awful start because they were also awful against Kentucky. So the the thing is, we don't know if this is even Durante Jones's defense that he's running, um, which is kind of concerning going up against Jim McElwain as a play caller. Jacob Sermon is their quarterback. Now he's really talented, a six foot five, two thirty sophomore. But here's the key thing about Jacob Sermon is that he is not a dual threat quarterback. Now we have broken down uh, how this schedule is so different for LSU compared to last year, where they barely played any dual threat quarterbacks. Well, this year they are playing a lot. And honestly, you could make the case that Jacob Sermon is the last pure pocket quarterback on LSU schedule outside of who they will play uh, against Mississippi State. So that is a major plus for LSU's very talented pass rush. That That means that they could be more aggressive in their pass rush lanes. Something else is Jacob Sermon is also a very sackable quarterback. Yes, he's 6'5", but he does go down easy. So you are not talking about a a Ben Roethlisberger, who is extremely difficult to sack. Uh, Jacob Sermon is more like Matt Ryan. If you get to him, you're more than likely going to bring him down. Now, as far as Central Michigan's playmakers to the outside, they're decent. I don't think they're as good as uh, their running backs. Their running backs are actually really talented. Uh, We haven't talked so much about their defense just yet. Uh, Harrison is obviously the defensive end that Ed Orgeron pointed out. His health is still up in the air. I really like their linebackers. Uh, They're both from Michigan, Troy Brown and uh, the other ones slip in my mind right now. Overall, though, I do feel comfortable about LSU's weapons to the outside going up against Central Michigan's uh, secondary, who I think can be exploited, especially with Keishon Butte and Jack Bash. So we'll see. This is going to be a very favorable matchup for Max Johnson. I do think Central Michigan's front is somewhat blockable defensively, but still, it's going to be tough for an offensive line that's obviously struggling. Uh, And let's be honest. Uh, Missouri was able to run the football some on Central Michigan. So this is also a matchup. If the LSU running game was to ever get going, this would be the matchup. Unfortunately, Armani Goodwin, it looks as if he's not going to be able to go this weekend. Still, Corey Kiner, Trey Bradford, and hopefully TDP break out and have a big time performance. So I normally like to give you a few key players. I shared this with my guy Blake on Are You Serious Sports? LSU does get a healthy Chase and Hines back this week, big number 57. They're going to really need him to really play to his potential in this game because right now Liam Shanahan is struggling at center. So we really need Chase and Hines to step up as a leader and have a big game against Central Michigan. And hopefully the same thing for Ed Ingram, who took a huge step forward against McNeese. So those are two keys right there, the guard play for LSU, because once again, they should. This front for Central Michigan is a front that you should be able to run against. So Central Michigan's tacklers aren't good in space. I I do think overall, just the back seven of Central Michigan. I just don't think they are that talented. In other words, we should be able to make them miss. We should be able to break tackles and get extra gains. So just overall, that entire back seven for Central Michigan should be one that LSU should exploit. Now, once again, we need Max to play better. But overall, I just watching them on tape, I, I was not really impressed with Central Michigan. Once again, though, I, I watched them mostly, obviously, in their game against Missouri in week one. They played Robert Morris last week, and they destroyed them. Um and they put up 500 yards of total offense. Once again, LSU played a weak team last week with better talent and only got 300 yards of total offense. Still, when I look at the Central Michigan defense, though, I just don't know if they have really special talent in that back seven. So, look, LSU's offense has not looked that great, but if they keep Kayshawn and Jack Bash on the field... They should be able to eat against this secondary if Max gets through his reads and plays confident and if this offensive line improves. So you're looking at a play right here. This type of action, these types of motions are what Jake Peets has been trying to do. Like McNeese State, Central Michigan runs a little bit of an archaic four-man front. 
um, very traditional. So I think LSU should be able to get these types of passes to their running backs. Shout out again to my guy Christian, longtime supporter of PHL. He has long been telling everyone on this channel that one of the biggest things holding LSU back is the inability to get passes complete to their running backs. This should be a game that LSU should be able to get passes like this very easily. So this point spread is hovering around 1920-ish um, for LSU to cover. That is a huge number uh, for a team that is not playing well. Central Michigan should be beat with this roster by that many points, especially now that there is one little extra caveat that we're saving you here for the end. Remember, these are young men, and there are always external factors in college football, and this is a big one. Central Michigan is actually flying in the day of the game. So normally the way things work is the team is able to fly in the day before. They're able to go visit the stadium or have some type of walkthrough. That is not the case for the Chippewas. Uh, they were not able to fly in the day before because, as many of you know, the hotels are packed out with our brave linemen that are trying to get electricity all throughout South Louisiana. So because of all the electricians and contractors, uh, Central Michigan could not book a, a, a right amount of hotels. In fact, a lot of fans had their plans canceled. I, I wanted to show you a photo of Ed Orgeron. I know you've been watching a bunch of really cool film between Central Michigan and, and Missouri. And yes, this game does have a lot of similarities to that game. But this is the major wild card. Who is between the headset? Now, as many of you know that watch this channel, I always like to leave one extra little bonus nugget for you at the end, okay? You thought you had it with the Central Michigan travel plans, but I'm going to give you an extra one here. What made that Missouri game so fascinating was that game was really close. Uh, Missouri really had to sweat that one out, and Central Michigan did not have Jim McElwain on the sideline. He had an emergency medical situation, and... He wasn't able to actually be there to adjust. So Central Michigan's coaching staff, without their head talisman, was able to uh, actually do a really good job coaching against Eli Drinkowitz's staff. And as many of you know, LSU's coaching staff is not that great right now. You have two first-year coordinators trying to discover what they want to do uh, and what they want their identity to be. Obviously, tempo is something that Ed Orgeron has preached as far as, you know, getting plays in, getting uh, getting plays in quicker and being more fluid in, in all aspects of that. Um, and, and obviously, defensively as well, we'll see how Durante adjusts against an offense that will be able to move the football some on him. So, you know, we'll, we'll see. Because, look, McNeese was in good field position a few times. They just could not finish drives. And some of that was just to the the lack of their talent up front. It's going to be it could be a little different this Saturday. So, you know, this is a game where all of LSU's coaches are going to have to step up outside of Ed Orgeron. Remember, LSU will be missing a key assistant, and obviously prayers out to Kev Falk as he goes through a very deep personal tragedy with the loss of his daughter. Uh, everyone's going to have to step up. Uh, and and this is top to bottom, analyst and all of that, because obviously Ed Orgeron, it's tough to be a head coach when there are so many external factors that are creeping in now, some of which is off the field, and I don't care who you are, when you start hearing people say that you are no longer fit to be the head coach, it does have an effect on anyone's psyche, really. So this is the time that... LSU's first-year coordinators need to have a really good game. And maybe I'm just throwing this out into the wind. Maybe I am just moving all my objectivity out of the window because I am really skeptical that LSU will lose, this, will lose, will win this game. I, it, I'm very skeptical that LSU is going to get it done this Saturday. But I'm actually going to go opposite. I'm going to go opposite every prediction piece that I've seen and every prediction score that I've seen. And I'm actually going to pick 
LSU to cover the spread and play their best game of the season. Why not? College football is wild and crazy. I, I legit was about to pick Central Michigan to win this game, but always go opposite, right? LSU wins this one 45 to 21. Why not? This is it. Hope you enjoyed this video today. Uh, obviously, 5,000 subscribers. That's a lot of cool things. That's really cool. Whatever. Uh, I don't know why I'm rocking the uh, the J-Boy backwards hat today. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know. I, I, I am normally a hat guy, but, you know, I, I, I don't know. Should I keep the hat? Let me know. Uh, anyway, uh, halftime live stream, post-game live stream. We'll see you. Let's go. Let's go. It is. Power, our LSU, boom! Let's go, Tigers, let's go! And I think we are doing tacos tonight. Let's go!